Rakeeb Shaw's Paradise Lost is an amalgamation of Western and Eastern influences. This mix of Western and Eastern influences is prevalent throughout every frame of the artwork, most particularly within its postmodern frame. But before we look at that, a little about the artwork and the history to it. At 9 by 3 meters, it is an enormous artwork that has been created with oils and enamel stained glass paint inlaid with a porcupine quill on oak, with rhinestones and glitter added for a sense of majesty. The use of enamel stained glass alludes to Chinese Kwazane style, and his use of triptych style references medieval, uh, medieval Christian artwork. The title, Paradise Lost, is an allusion to English poet John Milton's 17th century epic about the fall of man from the Garden of Eden. With an upbringing in both the East and the West, Shaw has been inspired by artworks, literary and visual, from both, both reason, regions. One artwork in particular that Shaw has noted being influential to him is Hieronymus Triptych, The Garden of Earthly Delights, an ambitious work that depicts the Garden of Eden in three different frames. The first represents God bestowing the garden to the prelapsed Adam and Eve. The third represents damnation and punishment for taking the apple from the tree. But it's the second that's the interesting and controversial one. It's debated as to whether it is the liberty and knowledge gained from going against God's word or whether it is the beauty of harmony and innocence in the Garden of Eden. The eroticism and what that represented during the time would indicate that it is perhaps the former rather than the latter. But ultimately, Bosch's artwork represents the fall of man due to the nature of humans, or the human condition, and it is this concept of the fall of man that Shaw really explores in his artwork, Paradise Lost. While Bosch's artwork is a look at the fall of man in a positive light, as liberation from God's rule and the granting of knowledge, Shaw shows that the garden is a pristine environment, tainted by the recently fallen man, represented in the gorillas. Shaw says that Paradise Lost represents his childhood in the now extremely politically unstable Kashmir. Noted as being one of the most beautiful parts on earth, a true Garden of Eden, it is now rife with destruction due to the political unrest between Pakistan and India. In response to this, Shaw has created his opus that reflects a contrast between beauty and brutality. From a distance, Paradise Lost looks like a true Garden of Eden, but up close, it is easy to see is brutally tearing animals and creatures apart and devouring them whole, blood and gore everywhere. These gorillas are an interesting motif that often appears when talking about the fall of man. One particular reference is within Daniel Quinn's modern classic, Ishmael. The book is probably the most famous modern text about the fall of man, with the main protagonist being guided through the journey by a telepathic gorilla. We can only assume that being such a prominent influence on the discussion of the fall of man, that this motif came to be a part of Shaw's inspiration. But the gorilla is also an important part of the discussion of what is man, particularly in the context of science and evolution. Science is being an obvious contrast to Shaw's religiously inspired piece, we know that the gorilla is commonly seen as the origin of man, pre-evolved. This idea of man from ape is controversial within the realms of Western religion, and yet within Eastern religion, the monkey species is seen as sacred. Again, we see contrast between Shaw's Eastern and Western influences. A clear representation of a creature only having recently arrived at a state of awareness, Shaw depicts the gorillas as holding more beast-like qualities than they do human. They sit and they devour their food like an animal and destroy the nature around them, the nature that they are becoming less and less a part of. Rakeep Shaw's Paradise Lost is so riddled with contrasts, beautiful colours against such brutal images, religious conceits against science, western styled triptychs uh, and medieval art influences against Ch Chinese Kwazane styles, and English literature and western religion against a backdrop of the gorgeous eastern landscape of Kashmir. This is the beginning of the fall of man from his natural habitat, his natural home in heaven, a paradise lost. <laughs>